I'm going to show you now the sort of minimum amount of things I think you need to do when you're first setting up the Shuriken. Uh, I'm not going to do any performance related enhancements until later because I really do want to fly this sort of in its stock configuration. But there are a few things you need to do before you go fly the first time. Now I have bound the receiver to the transmitter off camera and it's the same as always. You put your transmitter, in this case it's Free Sky, you put the Tyrannus into bind mode, you press a button, and the button is accessible through the top plate of the Shuriken. So you don't need to take the top plate off to get at the receiver or anything like that. Very well designed. You press the button, you power the, the shuriken, and then it powers up and it binds. So, okay, it's bound. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to modes, and I'm going to confirm that my arm mode is working as expected. And if you see here, if I arm, now we've armed, and arm has turned green. And just in the interest of safety, I like to nudge this down. Uh, it's only two positions on this switch, but I like the arm mode to be as small as it needs to be uh, to try and not end up arming accidentally. And then the other thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to set air mode so that it's just on all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter what aux channel I use here. I'm going to just have air mode on all the time because I do like to fly that way. Uh, I never switch it off. We'll just leave it on. Okay, so air mode and arm are configured. If you do not have a black box mode configured, then black box logs whenever the copter arms. If you do have a black box mode configured, black box will log whenever that's true. So that's actually fine. I'm fine with that. We'll just log anytime it's armed and it'll fill up pretty quickly. There's one more thing you definitely need to do before you fly and that's test the fail safe. We can see the fail safe is set here. It's gonna time out after one second and it's gonna go into landing mode. I'm not entirely comfortable with the one second timeout. I'm going to set it a little shorter to five seconds. And let's just see how this land mode works. I believe that this should actually just kill the motors because the throttle value used for quote unquote auto landing mode is 1000, which is the same as min command. So the motors should just stop. As I said in the other video, my preference would be to use just drop, but let's see how the factory mode works. So now that I've checked the configuration in clean flight, I'm going to do it with the actual battery and the actual copter on the bench. Uh, it's very, very important that you make sure to install your video antenna before you power up and I have done that each of the times I've actually powered up. If you don't do this you have the potential to burn out your video transmitter especially if you've switched from 25 milliwatts to 600 milliwatts as I have. So I'm ready to power up now. Props are off. I'm gonna power it. Okay. <laughs> ESC is not quite in sync there. Fine. And I'm gonna arm. Motor spin, disarm, motor stop, good. And I'm gonna arm, and transmitter off. Fail safe, successful, great. Everything worked as, uh, as expected. I'm now ready for my hover maiden. Okay, so we verified that the copter disarms correctly and fail safes correctly. The next step before you fly it is to do what I call a hover maiden. So we're gonna maiden the copter, but the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hover it and that will confirm that the motors are spinning the right direction, the props are on correctly, and etc. Now I know this is an almost ready to fly, so it certainly should have come configured with the motors going the right direction, but it always pays to be safe. If any of that goes wrong, then the copter will flip out and turn into a flying whirlwind of death. So you don't want to do that in your house, next to your big screen TV, in your baby's crib, right in front of your puppy's face any of that. I'm going to do it outside. I like to do it on the grass so that if the copter does flip out, it doesn't hurt itself too much. And I'm going to stand well back from it. If it flips out, sometimes it just turns over and just digs itself into the ground. And sometimes it goes 30 feet rapidly in a random direction. So we're not going to do it near anything that could be damaged. And we're not going to stand close to it. We're going to stand well back. All right, copter is powered up. I'm standing well back. Let's give it a, a test flight. I'm going to slowly raise the throttle and watch for any sign that it's flipping out and be ready to disarm immediately. Nope, it's good. Looking good. And then the other thing I like to do is a few throttle punches to see if the motors are having any issues. Like I said, don't do this near your puppy or your baby or your, or your, yeah. 
Quadcopter dog. Chopper. Chopper. Just ignore me. Just ignore me. Goodbye. This is my life. All right, and now you are ready to fly. Uh, the, the step that I'm not going to show you is that when I first start flying, I always do some slow, low flights uh, before I start getting super aggressive, just to make sure that there's not something that's going to catch me out, a problem with a video transmitter, a problem with video range, or maybe a motor that's going to glitch. And I sort of work up over the first battery or two to more aggressive stuff. But you don't need me to show you that. It's, you, know, you get that. The next video in the series will be the tuning, and I'm going to discuss how the Holy Bro Shuriken flies when it's on its stock settings and how I tuned it up to fly what I think is better, and even going to show you how it flies on Betaflight 3.0. Look forward to that. In the meantime, happy flying.